starting afresh. Let me give you a brief about what uh, actuarial science is and uh, why am I standing here introducing actuarial science in uh, MBA college. So actuarial science is a course which is conducted by Institute of Actuaries of India. It's a professional course like Chartered Accountancy which is conducted by Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. I believe everyone is aware of uh, Chartered Accountancy, right? So they have a certain set of exams that you have to pass before you can uh, become a qualified Chartered Accountant and you have to also go through a three years internship or articleship training. So Actuarial Science is also a similar profession. It's a professional course. Like Chartered Accountancy Institute prepares Chartered Accountants, Actuarial Institute prepares Actuaries. We have a set of 15 exams. It takes around five to seven years to complete all the exams. It is mandatory to have three years experience before you can become a qualified actuary. So now, because everyone is hearing this word for the first time, uh, I'll tell you what an actuary does. How many of you over here have taken a car insurance policy or your dad has taken a car insurance policy? Everyone, it is a mandatory thing to do. The premium of that car insurance is calculated by actuaries. So what amount of premium you are paying is done by us. Oriental Insurance is a general insurance company. So we have motor insurance, house insurance, health insurance, airlines, marine, aviation, you name it, we have it. So all premium calculations are done by actually. So the, the amount that you put on the check is done by us. Suppose you take a policy today and uh, two months down the line, you're, you suffer an accident. You send the car to a garage, the repair happens, you get the claim payment and you are happy. But in the back end, in the insurance company, I have collected, for example, 7,000 rupees or 10,000 rupees in premium from you. And uh, if a damage happens, I pay out 25,000 rupees, 50,000 rupees, could be any amount. And it could be two times in a year or three times in a year. So how do I ensure that the company, after collecting the premium from you, does not go insolvent? That it is not in a position to pay the claims to you. So in the back end, when I'm sitting in office, I have to calculate the amount of reserves or amount of money that should be held in the company. So in the eventuality claims come, the company is in a position to pay it out rather than saying we are bankrupt, we cannot pay you. So motor insurance is a small segment. There could be power plants, Indian oil plant, a fire at Indian oil could be 500 crores, Kashmir floods, Hurud floods, anything. So we, we face losses worth 100, 500, 1000 crores. And for that, reserving has to be done in the company. So these are the areas where an actuary has to put his statistical um, knowledge to use in predicting the future. So that's a very uh, good statement I quote, actuaries make financial sense of future. So we work a lot on probability, statistics. We are not astrologers. We, we work on Excel, we work on numbers and try to put a number on future uncertainties. And my role is, uh, in terms of any actuary's role is to make uh, data work for you and uh, I don't know how many of you would fancy numbers over here how many of you would be comfortable with alpha beta gamma but uh, the job is basically to make these things um, present to the audience or to the management in simpler terms so what a number is saying number numbers do say so it, it should be uh, it's an art to read the numbers and make it a statement so that's uh, basically the job of what uh, actuaries are involved in and uh, you, you must have heard of insurance, general insurance, life insurance, health insurance. Those are the traditional areas where actuaries are involved because a lot of probability is involved when a person would die, when a car would claim, when a ship could sink. So they are all estimates. We are working on estimates. So they are the traditional areas where actuaries work in and uh, it's an emerging area uh, like enterprise risk management. Have any, has anyone heard about enterprise risk management? 
basically now risk management if you see a lot of uh, frauds and uh, um, miss happenings in the company that because of uh, you know not proper controls and on risk so that is an emerging area you need not be an actuary but uh, you need to be aware of such domains which are coming up wherein you can use your financial skills to assess the risk in an organization i would like to ask uh, anyone with the work experience okay so what kind of industry are you from so software software okay can you tell me one risk which you saw in the company that you were working with with the, the data failure data failure okay and any measure of uh, mitigating it uh, so to recover it by other softwares <laughs> okay <laughs> uh what could be a measure to control the data failure sir to opt a good technology and uh, the latest one okay what else anyone else <laughs> who has not worked in software could suggest something so always to keep a backup uh by by storing it some in some secured place secured place in the office itself maybe okay any other suggestion offsite storage yeah offsite so that is another risk disaster recovery so you have a backup in your own office plus a backup for example if you are working in delhi have the other data center in chennai there is a cost involved you to operate the center from chennai bandwidth connection maintaining something some you know all these cost and whether the data leakage does not happen from there so these all risk need to be assessed quantified and then worked upon worked upon in the sense to monitor him and with whatever analysis you do by monitoring mitigate them so this is an emerging area enterprise risk management which i wanted to discuss with everyone here so in uh, uh, e-commerce there is a huge market risk it risk and we need professionals uh, who can come up with ideas of mitigating and uh, monitoring such risk and there are n number of risks which we don't know are existing as of now but they could emerge in future so who has the potential to think of such adverse scenarios model them quantify them and tell them to the management of whichever company they are working with and come up with a solution and uh, so that basically what i wanted to discuss about actuarial science and uh, enterprise risk management any questions from anyone and i'll i'll be rather make it more conversational type so if you have any question you want to discuss about <coughs> any field you want to discuss about i'll be happy to answer there is a minimum is you have to be 12th standard pass and uh, for actuarial science there is a actuarial common entrance test so anyone e even if he is a mba or a chartered accountant or a bcom bsc he has to appear for that common entrance test and once he passes that he is uh, he is good to go with the exam so basic basic maths and stats 10th and 12th standard maths uh, statistics uh, whatever you did for your mba preparation is basically the syllabus for uh, the entrance test plus statistics you were mentioning there are 15 papers here yes so what are these any idea what are five so okay the 15 papers in uh, actuarial profession are divided into four categories so first category is called core technical series which is testing your technical skills in statistics <coughs> mathematics economics financial reporting so it's called core technical series by the reason a lot of uh, mathematics and accounting and economics is used basic level so nine papers are in the core technical series then is the core application series which is around uh, how an actuary or how anyone communicates with the business world so a person communicates with the business world by way of excel models and by way of writing our presentations so, and uh, so core application stage tests your modeling skills it tests your communication skills because to be a good actuary you don't want to bore someone with numbers you want to give the message so, so, so sitting over here i cannot show him excel spreadsheets one after the other he wants to know what is the message in these sheets so it's your duty to make those spreadsheets give a message so how to communicate those and then how does a business operate like actuarial control cycle asset liability management all those things are covered in the core application stage 
and then once you are done with the core series of 12 papers then it's the time to choose your specialization so there are six specializations life insurance health insurance general insurance pension finance and investment so out of six you choose two specializations so then, then the third series is called specialist technical so you do the technical aspects of the chosen specialization suppose you choose uh, life insurance and pension so you will work on mortality morbidity all the life expectancy diseases kind of thing so you do the technical things and then as to qualify as a actually you have to choose one final specialization it could be one of the two that you have already chosen or it could be the third one and then that is called a specialist application so 9 3 2 and 1 that's basically the structure of the final Assurance is a is an agency channel, so it could work in life insurance, it could work in general insurance. So that's not a special module, but it's part of all the main uh, specialist courses because it's one of the distribution channels like direct sales, yeah, bank assurance, agency brokers. So one of the agency, uh, one of the distribution channels, and it takes. Uh, so if you qualify within five years, uh, you get uh, awarded by the institute. And uh, as of now, it's a profession which is nearly 50 years old, but people have started to hear about it in the last 10 years when the private industry opened up. Until date, there are only 275 actuaries. And out of those 275, nearly 50% of them would be over the age of 60. So the huge potential and huge uh, lack of qualified people in, in the Indian market and uh, everyone would have heard about the insurance bill having been passed so a lot of new companies will come reinsurers would come into the market but we are still facing a lack of qualified actuaries the cost percentage i believe is very less very low it's around uh, two to five percent and uh, yeah that is that is one reason as mr Shivastav said it's a high paying profession around the globe it is uh, indeed world's number one profession and um, investment bankers do get probably higher salary than us but then they do have to work 24 hours actuaries don't have to work 24 hours so that is the work life balance is maintained and uh, just to uh, you know give you a perspective now even actuaries in the east are earning as much as the actuaries in west so it's in India, you can easily think of salaries touching 1 crore rupees, even more. So, that's the kind of uh, profession this is.